Yeah. What's up, New York City? Tuesday night, Tuesday, baby, Tuesday. Keith McPherson back at it again. It's been a while. It's been over a week. Let's see if I still know how to work this radio thing. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Here we go. Yes. Sports talk right here in New York City, WFAN. This is KM to AM, a five-hour marathon. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm clearly excited. I miss the callers. I miss the conversation. I miss being in this chair on the mic. I missed you too, Paulie. Let's get it tonight. I don't have another show like this the rest of the week. And I'm going to spring training next week. And I don't know. Let's make the most of it right now. Not going to bury the lead because this morning I woke up to the uh, morning show talking about Kyrie Irving possibly playing in Barkley Center soon. Evan Roberts tweeted a clip from the WFAN digital team. Shout out to those guys. They're killing it. Boomer mentioned to Reco something along the lines of, how would you like to have Kyrie Irving back for home games soon? And Gio was like, Kyrie Irving soon? What? And he's like, yeah, as soon as Thursday. And they basically alluded to, whether they were telling any truth or not, they alluded to conversations going on about this mandate. That was 8, 9 in the morning. And take that however you, you may. People in Nets spaces, Nets Twitters on, online, and uh, you know they're buying into that as if it's gospel. Now, there obviously should be conversation around this. I don't think Boomer would get on a nationally televised radio show and talk about something just to troll. But uh, last week, when we first heard about the Mets and Yankees being involved, it was March 15th. I had maybe five minutes of airtime. I said, beware the Ides of March. A2 Brute. And you Mets, Yankees fans, joining the Nets fans and living in the Nets world. We've been dealing with this all season. And now it is about to end because tonight I'm telling you, there is no way that we go into April 7th and beyond with a mandate that says guys like Aaron Judge, Anthony Rizzo, Jacob DeGrom, whoever can't play in their ballparks. It made national news and it's been making national news because I think nationally and internationally, They're wondering what is going on in New York. How is Kyrie Irving at the arena two weekends ago, unmasked, courtside? He's been practicing with the team every practice in Brooklyn, but can't play with the team at Barclays Center. Is there a different strand? Is there a different variant? Is there a different version of COVID that only hits unvaccinated players that play for New York? Because I'm pretty sure the rule says the visiting players are just fine. They just got to test negative. Who came up with that? Are you really going to fight this? So here's the quote that, you know, just really bugged me today. Eric Adams, man. I mean, (laughs) hate hate to call you out. Hate to bring another brother down. But this is rock dumb. This is stuck on stupid. He says, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to follow the science. We're going to make the right decision. And in New York, no matter what you do, this is 8.8 million people and 30 million opinions. So you're never going to satisfy New Yorkers. You must go with the logic, your heart, and the science. That quote is maddening. And I understand if you're not mad yet. But you might be in a month if we're still stuck on stupid. Because if you care about the Yankees the way I care about the Yankees, if you care about the Mets the way that I care about the Mets, they are being put at a competitive disadvantage because of stupidity. There is no real rhyme or reason here. There's no real science here. Science doesn't say that COVID moves into... COVID doesn't discriminate. We just went through two years of it. We know. Almost everybody you know had it. Almost everybody you know got vaccinated, but not everyone. You don't know these ball players. You don't know their lives. We're going to find out. I jokingly said, could you imagine opening day 
Anthony Rizzo and Aaron Judge sitting in legends watching the Yankees run out onto the field (laughs) because there's a mandate in place that says that they can't play, but a visitor from Boston can come in just fine and compete against the Yankees unvaccinated. There is no logic. There is no science behind that. This will end by April 7th. I understand that Eric Adams came out and said that we got to wait. Baseball, basketball, businesses, they got to wait. We'll wait two weeks. Moving on from that, there's a ton to talk about tonight. I'm watching the Mets right now. I just saw something for the first time I never saw. The Astros finding new ways to cheat on the right foul territory in uh, spring training. There is, like, somebody warming up. One of the pitchers warming up. Pete Alonzo goes to catch a foul ball. The guy's in the way of his path. They called it an out. I've never seen that before. (laughs) Astros finding new ways to cheat. I'm also watching the Mets, and I'm like, I got to get used to seeing these guys in blue and orange. Adam Adovino? I'm like, what is Adam? Oh, Adam Adovino is on the Mets. Mark Canna, Eduardo Escobar. Max Scherzer pitched for the Mets yesterday. In real life, in real life, DeGrom pitching tonight. Today, guess what happened in real life? I met John Sterling today. <laughs> Man, shout out to John. So graceful. That voice. I couldn't believe it. He just walked around the corner. It's like a superhero popped up. I mean, you guys might not feel that way, but I love John Sterling. I made sure to give that man his flowers. I appreciate his humor. I appreciate his stick, his knowledge, and what he brings to the game. And I can't wait to join him. I'll see him this weekend at spring training. Neither one of us were concerned about the Yankees spring training today. Uh, They played yesterday. They played today. It's spring training. Yankees fans, please relax. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. It's just spring training. Oh, yeah. Manfred's man on second is back. They snuck that in on us. (laughs) <laughs> sneaky, one more year of it. What else is going on? Oh, guys are avoiding arbitration. IKF, Isaiah Kiner for Leffa, is Falifa, 4.7 million. Pete Alonzo. Heard the guys talking about Pete Alonzo. I was out in Colorado when he won his second home run derby, watched him put on a show and make another mill. Well, now he's worth 7.4 mil. Carton called that one right on the dot. Good job, Carton. What else do we got tonight? The Devils are hosting the Rangers. <laughs> Let's go, Devils. I think this is the night. Come on, Devils. I need you to get one for me. Since I've been a fan, I, I need you to get this one for me. I think it can happen. I almost bet on it. Not going to bet on it. I'm not too sure. Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks are back in town. Madison Square Garden, the New York Knicks. Julius Randle wanted no parts of that. The same way he wanted no parts of that series last year. We'll talk about that tonight. Trey Wingo will join me at 730 so we can talk about the quarterback carousel again. Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, Colin Kaepernick. (laughs) Just kidding. Malik Willis' pro day. Kenny Pickett's pro day. I don't know, maybe we'll talk about Urban Meyer who didn't know about Aaron Donald, Debo Samuel, Jamal Adams. Is that real life? It is real life. This is all real life. Brian Hoke will join me from Yankee Spring Training at 845. We'll talk Yanks. We'll talk Mets. We'll talk sports. This is Keith McPherson on The Fan. You're listening to KM to AM, a five-hour marathon. Let's hit that first break, and we'll be right back. 